Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Dan here from Headwaters Kayak. Behind me, I have five recreational kayaks with huge open cockpits ranging from $1,000 up to $2,000. I'm gonna walk you through the boats and then we're gonna go hit the water and compare them. So we're gonna start things off with the Old Town Loon 106. So the Loon 106 is a big, open, stable recreational kayak. You'll notice all the kayaks we're looking at today will all have a huge three to four foot opening. So easy access in and out. All will have a removable pod and or just an open area up front. The Loon in particular has a really nice pod in the front. And we're gonna talk about that. This particular Loon is an angler model. And as I open up this watertight hatch here, You'll see it's got an anchor built in as well as a little trolley in the back, a couple of rod holders behind the seat. But other than that, an angler model is just a few more features. The other really cool thing about this hatch is look, it's got a USB port. You plug that into your battery charger, your little backup, and then you have a USB port right here in the front and a cell phone mount, which I found that to be really cool. I did a review on our second channel, Headwaters Express, and uh, I was able to use that to charge my cell phone while I was on the water. It's also got a little cup holder here and a few little deck bungees up front. And these are unique with the way they're curved. When you open it up, it gives you a lot of elastic. So if you wanted to stick a dry bag up here, you totally could. Now there's also a ton of room underneath there if you wanted to stick a dry bag. So lots of room for storage on this boat, even though it's a fairly small kayak. It's got a little track up here as well. So if you wanted to add a pole holder, it would fit right on that plastic track. And underneath, this is kind of a neat feature, a water bottle holder, just like you'd have on your bike. So they're utilizing all that dead space between your feet for additional storage and creature comforts. As you move back through the boat, you'll notice it's got really nice heavy duty canvas thigh pads. You'll notice it also has an adjustable seat and this seat has a ton of different adjustments. It's got this adjustment here so you can adjust the pitch underneath your seat, your, your thigh support. It also has a ratchet system over here so you can adjust the seat back forward and backwards just by the push of this button. And then a high perforated mesh back. So you can see the foam in here actually has holes throughout it. So it's very breathable when you're on the water. The Loon itself is real wide. You see it has all this width behind the seat here. It's got a V-shaped bottom. So it's gonna have great tracking, great stability. This is definitely a beginner friendly kayak that a brand new paddler is gonna be able to go out and have success. Behind the seat, you've got this little, oh, hang on a sec, what is this? You know, I reviewed this boat and I never noticed this before. This little knob back here allows you to raise and lower the seat to get to your ideal position. I usually keep mine right in the middle. If you have your seat back too high, it really inhibits good paddling posture because it gets up between your shoulder blades. And in a kayak, you really need to be rotating. So we'll keep it there. As we move back, you'll see it's got a little bit more bungee behind the seat and then a cross bungee hatch. Old Town has a unique different design that has the gasket on the hatch itself. And I found these to be pretty watertight. They used to have these on necky kayaks when that was a thing. And um, they actually worked out really well. They're easy to use. You can kind of do it one-handed too. And this boat was stable enough, I was actually able to reach back in the cockpit, one-handed, open this up and access gear. Wasn't easy, but it was stable enough that I didn't feel like I was gonna go in. So next up, we have the Sorrento by Old Town Kayaks. They were nice enough to send both these boats out for me to talk about. And this is the 120. This one goes for $9.99, so a little bit less expensive than the Loon, which comes in at $1,049 but you also get a little bit more scaled down build quality on this boat. You'll notice the seat is a little bit more basic as opposed to having ratchets here on the side. It's got these straps that just seem a little bit more cheesy than what we had on the Loon, but still easy adjustable. You've got a seat pan that goes up and down, a backrest that goes up and down, and then you still have the ratchets here on the side that allow you to move the seat back and forth. So even though it's a little bit less expensive, it still is very adjustable. The thigh pads on it as well, compared to the Loon, are a little bit more basic. They're just adhered on, whereas the Loon actually is riveted in place and just has an overall better feel to it. The foot pedals in both these boats are really nice. I like that they're kind of like angled forward. They have grippy kind of a rubbery material on them. They definitely feel really nice. The Sorrento is also a really big boat. You don't have that dashboard up front, so the cockpit feels huge, four feet long. And then it goes way deep down in front. So lots of room, lots of volume. You could definitely paddle this as a 
you know, 250, 260 pound person and bring some gear with you. Or if you wanted to bring a dog and have the dog sit up there, it would be a great boat for that. For the record, the Loon Dash does fit quite nicely on the Sorrento. I tried that when I got them in because I really like this dash. So if Old Town sells out as an accessory, that might be a cool option too. One unique thing about the Sorrento that I, I really like is the fact that it has a retractable skag. Uh, you don't see that on a lot of boats. Most of these recreational boats will just have a lot of keel built in, which is the keel is the part that goes from the bow to the stern, and that's what gives you tracking. Well, this boat's unique in the fact that it has a little bit more rockered profile, and they get the tracking from a retractable skag, which is awesome if you're doing river stuff. So there's your skag there, and a skag allows you to adjust it all the way up or all the way down, or anywhere in between. So you can dial in your tracking just by where your skag's at. Now the only downside of that is now you're adding moving parts to a boat, so there is more potential for things to go wrong, but you have a lot of versatility with that setup. So overall, the Sorrento's real similar to the Loon. I just think the Loon has a little bit upgraded pieces and parts to it. Next up, we have the Liquid Logic Saluda. This one is the 12 foot. It also comes in its little brother, the 11 foot, as well as a tandem that comes in at 14 and a half feet. Now the Saluda is a boat that we've spent a ton of time on here in the channel. Seth's been using this as a video boat most of the year. We have a review of it. So if you want more information or a deep dive, go check that out. Uh, but we really like the Saluda. It's a great paddler. It's a little narrower. When you look at the Sorrento next to me, you can see it's smaller volume overall, a little bit lower slung deck, but it fits really, really well and it performs really nicely. Up front, you have this deck bungee with a cool little roller. So if I'm trying to stick my paddle under there, Real easy to get that in. It's got a waterproof hatch here, which, whoo, what kind of goodies do we have here? Sun shirt from last time we went paddling. Anyway, cool little watertight storage. Fits a cell phone, easy access on the water. It also has a little track, so if you wanted to add a rod holder, you could do that. And then if you wanted to take this whole dash off, three little wing nuts, and it comes right out. So as we move back into the cockpit here, you see it's a little bit different. It's got thigh pads that are a little bit lower slung, so they're meant to rest your knee against. You're not gonna have your legs up underneath them. Whereas on the Sorrento, it's kind of either way, but it's way higher. So it's a little bit tougher to reach with your knees, especially if you're a smaller paddler. So the Saluda has a frame chair as opposed to the adjustable seat pans. Now there's two different schools of thought and we're gonna test out both to see what's better. The nice thing about the frame chair is you've got a ton of support. You also have a chair that you can take out at the end of the day, you can use it as a beach chair or simply when you're loading and unloading the boat, you're saving the weight of the chair being out of the boat. This boat without a chair feels pretty light and easy to manage when we're car topping. The chair on the Saluda is pretty unique in the fact that it has height adjustment. So you have two different positions all the way down, or you can take it up a little higher. We usually run it in the high seat because that seems like the most comfortable and it still feels plenty stable. It's got a water bottle holder on this side, kind of built in, as well as a little bungee storage over here. You could put a dry box in or something like that. It's got adjustable foot pedals here that feel really solid and secure. I definitely like the foot pedals on this boat, as opposed to these ones, which I felt like were they're comfortable, but they're not quite as stout feeling. These ones are a little smaller, but they feel really, really secure in the boat. And then one of the coolest things about the Saluda is this. I love this hatch design. You flip these two levers, it pops open. You have a huge access point to your hatch. It's got a foam seal around here that creates a nice seal, keeps it fairly dry, even if waves come over the deck. And let's be honest, if wave comes over your deck on this boat, with this huge cockpit, you got bigger problems than a dry hatch. But the cool thing about this hatch that I found to be really unique is it's got the same latch on the other side so you can open it both ways. Kind of interesting, I like that, it's innovative. And then under here you've got bungee if you wanted to put a dry bag on top that you have easy access to, you can put that there. Lastly, it's got nice heavy duty plastic handles that are fixed to the boat, easy to grab, easy to pick up. Something I wanna talk about that I don't think is a fair assessment because this is the only boat out here that's not pretty much brand new but you'll notice how low this is. It didn't start off that low. At the beginning of its life, it was still low, but it wasn't this low. But we spent a ton of time with this boat upside down on racks, strapping it to different cars and maybe didn't have the best racks. And I think that there's a lesson in there. And that is how you transport your kayak, especially polyethylene kayaks really matters. If you're strapping straight to the bars, you're gonna be more prone to basically squishing the boat, especially on a hot day. If we look at the whole of this, it's got a little bit of a, a oil can or a warp and then the deck of it is squished down where it's not supported. I don't know how much of that is just specific to this boat being kind of unsupported in this area or how much of it is due to our negligence. I think if we had that same thing with the Old Town, over time we might get a similar, uh, similar situation. 
So next up, we have the quintessential recreational kayak, the Pungo. This is the boat that everything else is kind of measured up to because the Pungo has been around forever. It's been one of the best sellers in the industry for a long time, and rightfully so. It's really well made, it's well laid out, it's well appointed, and it has a price tag to prove it. This boat's going for $1,219 versus a Saluda next to it comes in at $1,099. So with that jump, well, you would think that there's gonna be some comfort and some feature benefits, and I really think that there is. Let's have a look at it. You got a nice heavy duty handle, you also have this front deck bungee, which is kind of unique. I'm not sure exactly what I would do with these extra deals, but then I noticed on their website that they have additional pouches that attach onto here so you could have like additional storage compartments up here. Or if you wanted a more traditional look, you could just do the cross pattern bungees here. So I'm kind of unique. I think they're trying to get, you know, different styling maybe than, than other brands. Their pod is really cool. It does take up a lot of the cockpit, so for getting in and out, it's, it's more room, but it pops off so easy that it's not a big deal to just take it off and then once you're in the boat, click it in place. This is cool, it's got a little waterproof storage that pops in and out. So if you wanna have things access during the day, but then take it with you once you get to the beach, kind of a unique way to do that. Then it just slides right in. They also do the track. One thing to notice on this one and on the Saluda, they use metal track versus the old town, which uses plastic track. You've got two cup holders here, as well as little mounting spots. If you wanted to add a X grip, a fish finder, kind of whatever, you could drill in and have an additional mount there. Lots of cool stuff going on on that hatch. It doesn't have that charging port, which I really liked on the old town. I think, you know, for the price, Wilderness should have a look at that. It wouldn't be that much to do. Foot pedals on this boat are really similar to the old town on the way that they're angled and they're rubberized but they do feel a little bit stouter, a little bit more heavy duty than the ones on the Old Town. You know, who's to say if it'll last longer, this is just me going off of initial feelings. So we're gonna talk about the phase three seat and what you're gonna notice is it's very similar to the Old Town we just looked at. This is the original design. I feel like Old Town maybe took what they learned here and refined it a little bit, adjusted it a little bit, and made it their own, but real similar in the fact that it has an adjustable height backrest. You just pull this lever here, Bring it down, flip that switch, and it comes back up. Again, I run mine in the middle. I don't want it all the way up and impeding my rotation. And then under thigh support, comes right here. You have a, a little handle, pull that up, and then you can taper this up underneath your thighs. And then forward and back comes on these little side adjustments here. And then they have these little release straps to pull them back. So very adjustable. You can really dial this boat in for your ergonomics. And that is the nice thing about this style of seat as opposed to a frame chair, is you have lots of little micro adjustments to make yourself comfortable. The last thing about comfort in this boat is the thigh pads. They have these big, deep thigh pads that are supported all the way down here with the plastic that goes down and underneath. And then they're plastic rivets that hold them in place. Same as you'd have on the Saluda, but on the Sorrento, it's just adhered to the boat. I worry about over time that that's gonna start peeling off. It's nice to have something secure that's gonna keep these on over time. They are all replaceable on all these boats. If you needed to get replacement parts, you can get in touch with the manufacturer and get yourself new pads. So behind the seat, we have a cross pattern bungee. This is used to do self rescues. It's a little small. It might be a little challenging to actually use, but you can fit a paddle underneath there with the paddle float and use it as a self rescue tool. On the hatch, they've got a couple of levers that flip open. It's nice and sealed on there. They do a nice heavy duty injection molded hatch. And these have a really deep seal, which I like. So this is not gonna be prone to leak over time. It's got a heavy duty seal that pushes in. I see a lot of overseas companies try to knock this hatch off and they do such a poor job. I've seen so many of these things leak, but the Wilderness Systems is actually injection molded and they have a rubberized seal that's really deep. So when you press this thing in there, it's like solid, it's sealed. You're not getting water inside that. The last unique thing about the Pungo is the deep defined keel kind of the reverse rocker in the nose, and then this long keel that sticks out the back. That's what makes this thing track so well and makes it so easy to paddle. It also has a replaceable keel. And honestly, that goes for almost all the boats except for the Eddy Line and the Sorrento. So next, we're gonna look at the Sandpiper 130. This is a boat I've spent a ton of time in this summer. I took it to the Arizona road trip we did and I paddled at all sorts of locations. I did big, like 15 mile days in it and definitely am a fan of this boat, so I'll start off by saying that's my bias. But it's unique amongst all these other boats because it is a recreational boat, but it's 13 foot, so it's a little longer, it's gonna be a little faster. The biggest difference is this is thermoformed ABS plastic as opposed to all these others 
which are roto-molded plastic. The other big difference on the Eddyline is every Eddyline model will come with two hatches and two sealed bulkheads, which means if this thing were to fill with water, you have all that positive air buoyancy on each end, making it real easy to empty the water out and do a self-rescue, get back in the boat, and get home safe. All the other ones, on the other hand, only have the single rear bulkhead, which is probably fine for most recreational users. Some people, if they're going in open water, would choose to put a float bag up in the front to help with that buoyancy. But Eddyline feels it's a priority. Every one of their boats will have two hatches, two bulkheads, and they've done that for years. So the Eddyline is also the most expensive boat in the bunch. This boat comes in at 1949. So I'm gonna expect the details to be a little bit higher end. Things as simple as the front handle being retractable on a bungee. Some of the others are like that, but this is definitely refined and solid. Has a metal locking point on the front as well as the back. Select designs hatches. So you get a nice watertight seal. It's kind of like a Tupperware. You just press in the center locks on you get a little bit of deck bungee in the front and then a huge open cockpit again this is almost four feet in length the thigh pads on it are adjustable so they're kind of small but check this out if i need to go back i've got a velcro spot there if i need to go forward i got a velcro spot there so really it can dial them into your height as a paddler it's also very deep compared to some of these other ones this is going to be a higher capacity real deep a lot of volume so it actually fits me and i can even fit my golden retriever up in front just because of the volume, the space it has there. Eddyline has a couple of sandpipers, the 120 and the 130. The 130 has a frame chair versus the 120, which has more of a traditional style seat pan and backrest. But the frame chair in this one is really nice, high back. It actually elevates up off the floor a little bit, which is nice because it gets your hips higher than your feet. Similar to the Saluda, it has four contact points and the seat can come all the way out of the boat. When you have a chair as opposed to a traditional seat, you get less adjustments. You don't have that same under thigh adjustment. You don't have that same height adjustment on the back. You just get a tall back that's sort of arched backwards. So when I'm paddling this boat, I'm actually only leaning up against the middle half of the seat. I don't have that thing cranked super far forward. And then the pan itself is fairly long, but it doesn't tilt and adjust to support you underneath your thighs, like the Wilderness or the Old Towns. Eddyline uses Sea Dog foot pedals, which are a nice, big, adjustable foot pedal. They're not padded, but they are very, very solid. This is the same thing I would see on like, you know, a two to $3,000 sea kayak um, that they're putting into their recreational boats as well. It's also got the bungee in the back set up for doing a paddle float rescue. This one's a little unique in the fact that they do double bungee on the side to make it a little heavier duty to support the paddle while it's out in the water. Behind that, you have a huge open oval hatch. Check this thing out. It is cavernous in there. If I wanted to fit a tent, sleeping bags, tons of gear could fit in the back of this boat. Uh, between that and the front and the open cockpit area, you could definitely do a weekend trip out of this boat and have room to spare. So what makes the Sandpiper unique is it's actually the lightest boat out of this bunch. It comes in at 49 pounds, even though it's the largest, it's got the most hatches. It's actually lighter than the polyethylene counterparts. So real quick, I just wanted to go over the weights of the boats. The Sorrento 126 comes in at 53 pounds. The Saluda over here comes in at 51. The Pungo, they're saying 49 pounds, which would be the same as the Eddy line. I just picked these two boats up side by side. And this boat's gotta be three or four pounds heavier than the Eddy Line. Even these two boats, technically it says the Saluda is more, but it feels quite a bit lighter when I just pick them up side by side. I really need a scale, because I feel like a lot of time kayak manufacturers just put the weight or the capacity they want you to see on their website, and it's not necessarily based off of what the kayak actually weighs. So maybe that's an idea for a future video. All right, I think that's gonna do it today. We covered a lot of ground, you guys. I know this is a long video. I appreciate you sticking around. Next week, you're going to want to tune in because we're going to get all these boats on the water, compare them side by side, and I'm going to give you guys my feedback. So thanks so much for tuning in. If you're not already, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss an episode. If you have any questions, leave those below in the comments. And until next time, this is Dan wishing you happy paddling.